Today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about men being diagnosed with prostate cancer under the age of 60. You know, sometimes we've seen men in their early 40s, I've seen even very late 30s, and in their 50s being diagnosed with prostate cancer, and because they're so young, there's a huge argument to get the prostate out, treat them right away, and unfortunately, there are uh, irreversible side effects a lot of times with that, and I don't think that men understand that maybe they have time, even in higher Gleason score situations, to, you know, take the time to do their research and not just jump into surgery or a different type of treatment in a couple weeks. But really, um, you know, how much does prostate cancer treatment change in younger men compared to somebody who's diagnosed when they're older? The thing to keep in mind is how much the technology has been changing over the last 10, 15, 20 years. And if we go back to, say, around the year 2000, the treatment options were surgery and radiation. And in that era, the radiation was not very good. It didn't really get the job done, and it often left men with um, long-term symptoms, urinary symptoms that could make them miserable, rectal symptoms that could make them miserable for, um, for decades. It was pretty much the universal consensus that surgery was a better option than radiation in that era. That situation uh, has changed now. Uh, the, uh, I think partly because uh, over the years we've learned that certain types of radiation, uh, such as implanted radiation in the gland itself, uh, so-called brachytherapy, offers a less damaging option with equal or even better cure rates. So it's been hard for the surgical community, I think, to steer away from their traditional belief that surgery is the best approach. And the surgeons in that area were taking care of a lot of the bad side effects that the radiation therapists had caused. And, uh, and they have their own emotional wounds about caring for these unfortunate men that had radiation burns. It's been a, a situation where people have been slow to realize that the as the technology has improved, that the old-fashioned surgery is best, surgery is the gold standard uh, belief system, um, is, it's been hard to, to change people's thinking and, and help them realize that there may be a better way. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that we're a nonprofit, and if you would like to join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my next question on prostate cancer and men under 60. If a man is like, let's say, 52 years old, he has maybe a Gleason 8 or 9, he's newly diagnosed, he walks into your office and says, okay, Dr. Scholz, my urologist has scheduled me for surgery in two weeks, what other options do I have? How would you handle that situation? In that situation in particular, surgery is definitely a poor choice. Uh, Johns Hopkins has published data showing that in Gleason 8 to 9 men who have surgery, about 80% will relapse over the next you know, 10 years or so. You want to be committed to doing both surgery and radiation, which we don't, of course, then have surgery first. The better option is to use a combination of radiation and uh, in conjunction with some hormone therapy. And you can achieve cure rates these days that are uh, close to 80%. Those numbers are being modified now with the advent of these new PSMA PET scans, people that have confirmed absence of any metastasis, of course, are going to have uh, better cure rates than those that don't. But the difference in cure rates between surgery and radiation-based options um, is, is quite large, and the surgical outcomes are much worse. The idea of using uh, radiation early, now that the techniques have been improved so much so that uh, the, the side effects that used to be a big problem, many of them have been reduced greatly with uh, modern radiation therapy. Surgery then becomes a decidedly inferior option compared to radiation. There being so many different types of radiation in prostate cancer, what would you suggest is typically, you know, the best as far as a clinical outcome? Well, I tend to try and steer patients toward the seed implant options. There's two types of seed implants, uh, permanent seeds and temporary seeds. Um, both are effective. It's just a different tech, uh, technique that's used by the uh, different practitioners of these, of these methodologies. What I like about seed implants is not only that the radiation doesn't have to be beamed through the body to hit the target, so you don't get a lot of unnecessary radiation. The brachytherapists also, due to that same reason, are able to escalate the dose a little bit higher than what can be accomplished with beam radiation, and that then uh, leads to better cure rates. And this has been demonstrated in prospective trials in comparing brachytherapy 
seed and plant treatment with beam radiation showing higher cure rates with brachytherapy. So when it comes to the brachytherapy and the hormone therapy, what type of side effects can a patient expect, especially having the combination of the two? Well, there's still a risk of erectile dysfunction. So if you take a 60-year-old man who's functioning well prior to getting any kind of treatment, the radiation treatment, brachytherapy treatment, will uh, induce um, serious erectile dysfunction that doesn't respond to Viagra or Cialis, perhaps in about a, a third of those men. So it's a, a serious risk that unfortunately is associated with radiation. I contend that the risk is even higher with surgery, and I think studies bear that out. The hormone treatment, depending on how long it's administered for, will cause uh, fatigue, loss of sex drive, hot flashes, loss of muscle, weakness. Uh, this is much more prominent in the men that take extended courses, say a year and a half of treatment, compared to the men that do a four-month uh, short course of hormone therapy. Short course hormone therapy is, is not pleasant, but it's over pretty quickly, and the uh, effects should wear off quickly. How would you say the advent of this new PSMA scan is going to affect men who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer at a younger age? The people who have PSMA PET scans that show any spread outside the prostate need a very aggressive treatment that would probably include both hormonal therapy, radiation therapy, and possibly even chemotherapy. The people that have no spread outside the prostate can probably adopt a, a treatment protocol that involves just treatment to the prostate alone and might even be able to skip the hormone therapy. These scans, of course, have allowed us to be much bolder in reassuring people that there's no metastasis. They're much more accurate than the scans that we used to have. So when it comes to the possibility of erectile dysfunction, I know we have other videos discussing it at great length, but can you go over lightly what a man can do or some of the options he may have if he's younger, he's in a situation where he had radiation and he is experiencing um, erectile dysfunction where it's not responding to the various pills that are out there. What type of options does he have in order to correct that? Not great ones. I mean, the, this is why we talk about this so much. It's, men want to think about this before treatment to try and pick the treatment that will have the least impact on their sex life. Because if uh, the Viagra and Cialis pills are not working, then you're on to things like injections or uh, prosthetic implants, uh, surgically uh, surgical correction, and uh, these are a big deal and they're not always successful. It's a serious situation if the medications are no longer effective. I think another issue when it comes to surgery is sometimes men have urinary issues. Is urinary issues also something that can happen with radiation? If you were comparing surgery and radiation when it comes to urinary effect, how does that look? The urethra goes through the center of the prostate, and so the surgeons, when they remove the prostate, they cut that urethra out, then they sew the two ends together. Unfortunately, 5-10% of men are going to have lifelong serious incontinence, um, even ejaculate urine for the rest of their lives. So that is one of the super negative aspects of surgery that can be avoided by skipping surgery. The radiation doctors, however, can uh, cause a burn to that urethra, and that can cause um, urinary frequency, urgency, or discomfort when, when men urinate. This is not a super common problem, but in a minority of men it occurs. Uh, people can predict for that with a new test called Prostox that will let people discern if they have a genetic makeup that will predispose to long-term radiation side effects uh, as, it imp as it impacts urination. And so that would be a consideration, is to have that test done before the radiation is, uh, is initiated. So you spoke about older forms of radiation and the cure rates maybe not being what you would want them to be over time. With modern radiation, you know, what are the cure rates? What are we looking to? And can a patient who's diagnosed in their 50s really be expect to be cured? And what would that definition be? Well, we consider cure in men who have stable low PSAs five years after their treatment. Cure rates uh, with modern radiation, particularly with brachytherapy, because they're able to deliver a higher dose safely, are actually better than surgery. And the reason is a result of the anatomy of the pelvis. The, the prostate is very close to the bladder and the rectum within millimeters. And so the surgeon has to cut right on the surface of the gland. And unfortunately, if there's any cancer cells coming out the edge of the gland, they're going to leave cancer behind and, and the cancer will come back. Radiation doctors have the liberty of spreading the radiation over the edge of the bladder or over the edge of the rectum. This has to be done very accurately and appropriately because if too much of that can cause side effects. But where the, there's a suspicion where the cancer might be coming over the edge, they can put an extra margin there with the radiation. And this leads to higher cure rates with radiation than we get with surgery. This, of course, is the, the bottom line. We talk about minimizing side effects, but the real issue is 
what gives the best cure rates. And the best cure rates, if you're comparing the finest radiation doctors with the finest surgeons, uh, the best cure rates are going to be achieved with the radiation options over the surgical options. I've seen medical oncologists suggest chemotherapy um, in younger men, like early use of chemo. Is that something that you do with patients? When do you use chemo and does that apply to younger men? It would apply to men that have uh, confirmed spread or, or metastasis outside the prostate. So that's really a different situation. When we're talking about treating prostate cancer, we're usually talking about men that have disease that's localized in the gland. If people have had PSA screening, they're usually getting picked up at an early stage, and we expect them to get cured with any of these different methodologies. But now with the PSMA PET scans, we're finding out which individuals have something in the lymph nodes or a spot on the bones. And uh, that is a different type of disease because the cancer has proven that it has the ability to jump into the bloodstream and spread around the body. And this is what uh, frightens us about cancer, is it can become deadly over a period of time. It's been learned with multiple disease types that an early aggressive approach with effective therapy, hormone treatments, chemo treatments, or a combination of the two, can eradicate any of those little roots or, or, or seeds that might be out there and that will later present a problem. And if uh, we administer effective medicines at an early stage, that we can improve the overall cure rates of these individuals. So I think that there is a huge concept that patients face when they're young and they're diagnosed with prostate cancer. It's the, I want to get it out right away and I want this you know, cancer taken care of because I'm young and I have so much life ahead of me. But I think a lot of times that men don't really think of their quality of life right away when it comes to being diagnosed with prostate cancer. And a lot of the decisions, as you spoke of, that can happen in younger men when they're making these treatment decisions, they can have side effects for the rest of their lives. So what do you say to patients who come into your office who are young, and how do you talk about their quality of life and really what to prioritize in comparison to the treatment decision? Well, I think sometimes people are so nervous about the specter of, of dying of cancer that they think that dealing with side effects is really a lesser issue. And I think that mentality is common and quite appropriate in many types, you know, pancreas cancers, lung cancers, bone cancers. What's different about prostate cancer, one is it does spread more slowly. It, it tends to grow relatively slowly. And unfortunately, because of its anatomic location in the pelvis, it's close to some very sensitive structures so that we, you know, our urinary function and our sexual function all these things uh, can be impacted in a way that will be ongoing for decades afterwards. So it's all important. It's not an either or situation. It's not just get cured at any cost. It's, uh, it's get cured with the best possible cure rates and at the same time minimize the side effects by finding the best treatment and the best doctors to do the treatment. So today we talked about prostate cancer in men who have been diagnosed under the age of 60. A couple of key things I wanted to point out. Number one, that just because you were diagnosed young, it doesn't mean you need to get treatment within a couple of weeks and get it over with. You have time. Prostate cancer, there's different types. If you have Gleason 6 that does not metastasize, it's important to know your options there with active surveillance. And if you have a higher grade of cancer, you still have time to go find the right doctor, do your research, find the right treatment for you, and know the side effects ahead of time so that you can create a side effect mitigation plan. You know, these side effects can oftentimes be permanent, and you want to know ahead of time if you're going to be dealing with something. And if it can be avoided upon treatment, then that's even better because you're going to live for a long time, especially if you catch it early. Prostate cancer is the slowest growing, but the greatest thing about it is there's a lot of tools that men have in their toolbox in order to treat prostate cancer, whether that's radiation, hormone therapy, you know, there's a whole list of treatments. And plus, you have new technologies that have come out, like the PSMA scan, where it can detect prostate prostate cancer in 90% of patients all over the body. It's really important to know that the technologies that you have today versus even 10 years ago are really good. And they can, as long as you have a doctor who works with you, as long as you're able to ask questions, create a plan and do your research, we've seen so much better outcomes in men who have been diagnosed young. I know many men who have been diagnosed at 49, 51, 52, into their 60s, and they are still with us today. They're doing well, their prostate cancer is in remission, or they're treating it with other treatments that they've now been approved with because they were treat they were maybe diagnosed a couple decades ago, and now a couple decades later, there's new treatments that weren't even available then. 
So I just wanted to give you a sense of hope. Just because you're young doesn't mean it's a death sentence. And there are many men who are out there living with prostate cancer and treatments and as survivorship, and it's an incredible thing to see. Please reach out to us if you would like more information or need help with your particular case. You can visit our website at pcri.org forward slash helpline to get your questions answered. And that helps you have better outcomes with your medical team. So you come in prepared for that doctor visit. If you would like to join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. All of these videos are getting out to men all over the world and their families, and we want to help them as much as possible. But please remember, you're not alone. Not only is PCRI here for you, but reach out to a friend. Maybe they had prostate cancer and you can have a companion in that process. If you have a partner or somebody to share that experience with, it's always good to bring them to doctor's appointments and have them ask questions with you. There are support groups, both virtual and in person. There's all sorts of resources online. Please reach out. Don't go through this journey alone. Be with somebody, and if not, watch our channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're here with tons of information, and we want to be here for you as well. Comment if you have questions, and like this video if you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great week.